So heading into the 2024 season, it's time to go through the predictions for the rankings for the men. This time, we already went through the WTA rankings. You can go check that video out somewhere on the channel. But let's see how many we can get right and wrong this time next year and try and make some predictions. It's a very tricky thing to make predictions for this kind of rankings because anything can happen, as we found out with Rafa Nadal last year. But let's go have a look at who I've predicted to be in the top 10 this time next year. So coming in at number 10 for the ATP rankings this time next year, I've gone with Sebastian Corda. A little bit of an outside pick. He's currently 24 in the world, but the thing is he had so many injuries this year, he really didn't get to perform in the middle part of the season, or at least this, after the Australian Open when he got some form. He's got points to gain in Indian Wells, Miami, and Monte Carlo, tournaments that he's done well at before. Also, the French Open in Wimbledon, he has no points to defend there either. So there's a massive upside from the Australian Open to almost the US Open series where he can make up so many points and he can play on grass and he can play on clay. So definitely can make up points there. Most points he has to lose is at the Australian Open. We made the quarterfinals this year. Shanghai, Queens Club, Adelaide, and also in Kazakhstan where he made the final. But other than the Australian Open in Shanghai, between those events, he has so many points that he can make up, like I said. And I reckon he might rocket up the rankings and get into the top 10. That is one of my bold predictions for the men's ranking this year. Coming in at number nine now, and I've got Hubert Hurkacz. He's currently number nine, and I reckon he will stay at number nine. He's got a massive upside, of course, finished the season so well in 2023. So I reckon he'll be able to maintain that ranking. He has points to gain in places like Rome, Madrid, Miami, Indian Wells, and the US Open. So on the clay courts, which isn't his preferred surface, but he can play on clay. But during the US Open, but during the USA events, of course, the American events could really get some upside. Of course, has to defend the Shanghai Masters, which he got his second 1,000 event. Got a lot of points there to defend. Cincinnati, Basel, Marseille, and also in the Australian Open. But I reckon he'll be able to maintain those points, especially the Sunshine Double. If he's able to get to maybe a semi-final of one or two of those events, also the US Open play well there, I think he'll maintain his ranking and stay in the top 10 this season. Coming in number eight now, and I've got Casper Ruud. I reckon he's going to return to the top 10, currently number 11 in the world. He has so many points to gain in places like Cincinnati, Madrid, the Paris Indoors, and also at the Grand Slams at the Australian Open and the US Open really performed badly at those two events. Also, you can chuck Wimbledon as well if he decides that he wants to play on grass. So a real big upside there at some of the big events. Of course, has to defend the French Open final. That's the most points he has to lose, which make up about 42% of his overall ranking. But, you know, Rome, Estoril, Bastard, and Monte Carlo got a few points to defend there. But the upside for Rude especially on the hard courts, is massive. So if he can play well on the hard courts in Australia or in America at the end of the year, I reckon he's got a massive upside and he's going to get back in the top 10. He's so consistent that I reckon he's going to get back to number eight. Coming in number seven now, and I've got Andre Rublev. Now, this time last year when I made these predictions, I kicked him out of the top 10 completely. That was my mistake. He is so much better than I predicted, and I'm going to give him the respect and keep him in the top 10 again this year. I think he was so good, but I think he will have a bit of a backslide after probably his career best season in 2023. He has points to gain in Cincinnati, Canada, Indian Wells, Miami, and at the French Open. The French Open, of course, being his worst slam this year, and then the four American hardcore events on the 1,000 level so a lot of points to gain there as well which we all know he can play on hard courts of course he has to defend monte carlo shanghai and those three grand slam quarterfinals he made at the australian open wimbledon and the us open but i reckon rublev might struggle a little bit to defend the monte carlo title but i do think he will gain a lot of points at those other events to offset that and i think he would backslide a little bit but he'll be at number seven this time next year coming at number six next year i've got alexander zverev now he's currently number seven so really between number five and number seven or eight i reckon it's gonna be really close between those guys and zverev's in the middle of that he has points to gain in miami shanghai australian open wimbledon and also madrid a tournament that he's won before he's played well at wimbledon okay as well and the australian open in miami at the start of this season he was still trying to get into some form now he's well and truly into form, so I reckon he can really make a run at those events. And of course, Shanghai at the end of the year, he's got nothing to defend there. He does have to defend the French Open semi-final from last year, Hamburg, the ATP Finals, US Open, and Cincinnati. But I reckon if Zverev can have a really good start in Australia and also at the Sunshine Double, going into the clay court season as well, I reckon he can really get a lot of points there, even if he doesn't do well at the end of the season. And he'll probably stay about where he is now at number six. Coming in number five now, and this might be a little bit controversial, but I've got Daniel Medvedev at number five. I reckon he is going to drop down the rankings a little bit, currently number three. He did have a really good run at the tournaments this year, but at the end of the year, it really did seem to feel like some of the other guys below him were starting to catch on to him, and he might struggle a little bit next year with the younger guys coming through. He's got points to gain in Paris, the French Open, of course, where he lost in the first round. 
Shanghai, Cincinnati, Madrid. But the problem is he's got the US Open final to defend. Miami and Rome also winning those events. Massive points there. The semifinals of Wimbledon and Indian Wells. So huge events there where he's going to have to defend those points, especially at the start of the season. Remember, he won like four or five titles out of six events to start the year. So he's really got a lot of points there before the French Open and then also Wimbledon and the US Open as well. So I think Medvedev might have a bit of a backslide. I don't know if he's going to be able to make enough points at the French Open to maybe offset losing earlier at one of the other slams and losing some of those points. Coming in at number four now, I've got Holger Runa, who's currently number eight. I think he did get to about number five or four in the world towards the end of the year until... He lost all the Paris Masters points and unfortunately dropped down, but I've got him about number four, especially with Boris Becker, and it does come with a bit of an asterisk. It depends on his health and if he can stay healthy because, of course, injuries are always a concern, especially with someone like Runa early in his career. He has points to make up at Cincinnati, Shanghai, Canada, US Open, and also in Madrid. So that US Open series he really can make up a lot of points, which is where he struggled in the past because... The season's so long. But he has a lot of points to defend on those clay court events, including Rome, Monte Carlo, the French Open, Wimbledon, and Munich. Wimbledon being the only non-clay event. So if he can have a good start of the year in Australia, and also if he can stay fit post-Wimbledon during that US Open series and into the end of the year, that's where he can gain a lot of points. And I think that's where Boris Becker will really come in handy of how to manage Holger Runa's body throughout the season instead of him just highlighting the clay court season and playing really well there and then just disappearing until the end of the year. So I've got him at number four. I reckon his body's going to catch up and his results are going to show. Coming in number three now, I've got Yannick Sinner and he's currently number four. Had a great end of last year and maybe some of you have him at number two or number one, but I've got him at number three. He has no points to defend in Madrid, so that could be really fun to see him versus Alcaraz going for that Madrid title next year. Also, Cincinnati, the French Open, Shanghai, and Paris has a lot of points up for grabs there. But of course, he has to defend the final of the ATP finals. He won Canada, a lot of points there. Wimbledon, Miami, and Beijing has a lot of points to defend at those tournaments. So I reckon that he will go up because he will make up points in places like the French Open where he did have a shock second round loss. And I reckon he might be able to maintain those points towards the end of the season as well. But I reckon he's going to go up one spot and finish at number three. Coming in number two now, I've got Carlos Alcaraz. He's currently number two. I reckon he stays at number two. And it's because the start of next year, he has no points to defend until really the sunshine doubles. So Monte Carlo, he didn't play. He obviously didn't play the Australian Open, which is a big thing for him, especially for getting those ranking points and putting some distance between him and number three. Also Paris Masters, Rome, and Shanghai could really do well at the end of the season to get those points. Has to play well at Wimbledon, of course, with the 2,000 points that he won from winning Wimbledon this year. Indian Wells, Madrid, French Open semi-final, and also the US Open semi-finals. So that's going to be a little tricky at those slams, but the Australian Open, he's got nothing to defend. And I reckon that's where he'll gain a lot of points. I don't think he'll take the number one spot this time next year, but I do think that he will be able to keep some distance between him and Yannick Sinner, possibly at number three. And coming at number one, the most obvious pick of all, Novak Djokovic. Now, I'll give you some reasons why I put Djokovic again at number one. I think this time last year, he was number five. I put him at number one. He got to number one. He did have a bit of a tussle with Alcaraz, but the difference this time is in 2024, he can play whatever he wants. Indian Wells, Miami, Madrid, Canada, Shanghai didn't play any of those events. Has all those points up for grabs. Can get, you know, possibly 5,000 points from those five events alone if he chooses to play. Of course, has a lot of points to defend at the Australian Open, French Open, US Open, ATB Finals in Wimbledon, where he played really well at the slams and the ATB Finals. And I think we can all bet that he's going to win at least two slams next year, right? If he doesn't get injured, but he's also going to be able to make up a lot of points at Indian Wells, Miami at the start of the year, and then towards the end of the year in Shanghai if he cho chooses to play that. So I've got Djokovic staying at number one. I think he'll maintain the lead over Alcaraz and finish the year at number one again. So there it is. That is my top 10 for the 2024 predictions. And uh, let me know down in the comments below. Who do you think is going to be in the top 10 next year? Do you think there should be somebody else in there? You can notice that I don't have City Pass in there. And I took Fritz out as well. So those guys, I reckon, are going to drop out of the top 10. City Pass really had a bad end of the season. And also, his points are really from the Australian Open. That's why he's not there. So I reckon City Pass, after the Australian Open, could be around number 9 or 10. And I just don't know if Steph's going to be able to get back into the top 10, especially with these younger guys doing so well. And maybe it's good for him to drop out of the top 10 for a year and also I think Fritz might get overtaken by quarter as the best American into the new season but let me know in the comments below who do you think is going to be in the top 10 next year what's your top 10 predictions we'll find out next year how many we got right and how many we got wrong